Uh, okay, so welcome to the YEA Big Clubhouse activities. And so today we will have two guest lecturers. And the first guest speaker will be Ricky Chong. So Ricky is a rising senior and he is the current YEA Vice President of STEM and he is the top scorer in the 2021 USAFO. And the second guest speaker will be Shang Yi. So Shang Yi is an incoming freshman at MIT, and he served a two-term, two-year term as the president of the association and a one-year term as a senior president. And during his high school career, he attended mock thrice, placed top 10 at every major math contest, and researched under the MIT Primes USA program. He is an incoming researcher at the University of Virginia REU in number theory. So Ricky, if you want, you can, you can begin now. Okay, um, hello everyone, um, let's begin. Okay, so um, so uh, yeah, I'm Ricky, and um, this lecture is the second part for for the relativity lecture that I gave a while back. Since um, yeah, this has some more information. So um, uh, a quick review of what of the lecture of the first lecture we first went over the two major postulates in uh, special relativity, which is that the uh, speed of light measured in every uh, reference, okay, wait. The speed, the two major postulates are in special relativity are the speed of light measured in every reference frame uh, is, um, constant. And the second postulate is that every frame is the same. There are no special frames. Um, yeah. So, and then we showed how from these, um, these two postulates, we can derive some basic principles of relativity. That is that, um, time dilation, uh, length contraction, and uh, time dilation, length contraction, and relativity of, of uh, simultaneity. So uh, yeah, so it's, um, yeah. Okay, so uh, now, so uh, assuming that everyone here knows what those are, uh, let's move on to some new content. Uh, so firstly, um, we uh, there is an important concept in special relativity that is known as um, an event. An event. So um, let me. So events are an important concept in relativity. Uh, so what is an event? An event is just a uh, point. Um, that has a uh, position, well, okay, a point um, with, uh, okay, that is defined uh, as, as a position and a time, and a time. So it's essentially a, a point on a coordinate plane, except yeah, an event is essentially a point on the coordinate plane. It well, not in, in like space, but also with um, but also, but there is like think of it as um a point in space as well as um a time associated with that point in space. So like if we have, so like if we have this coordinate uh frame. And we have like a point here. This point on the coordinate frame is not an event. An event is like this point uh, x, y, z, and then a time associated with that, with that, and then a point in time associated with that event. 
with that point. So like, um, yeah. So uh, these are, the event is a pretty important concept in relativity. It's used a lot. Most things are defined around events. So uh, some basic event is like, if we uh, have a light source and it shoots a light beam and this light beam hits uh, this another object, then we can say like uh, the 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 point when the when the source shot out a light beam is an event. It has it, it shot out a light beam at a certain position and time, and then when the light beam reached this other object, that is also an event because it reached another object, this other object at at a certain point and uh, at a certain position and time. So usually we just write events. Um, usually we, when we write about an event, we give its um, coordinates in space as well as a time. So yeah, that's what they are. And they're pretty important for um, the rest of relativity. Understanding them is pretty important. So are, you, so are there any questions about this? Okay. Okay. So, um, so now we come to the uh, one of the most important parts of relativity. That is the Lorentz transformation. So, um, uh, okay. So essentially, suppose we have like two coordinate frames. There is a coordinate frame S prime. And the coordinate, well, not well, yeah, coordinate frames, uh, S prime and um, S. And suppose that S prime is moving at a constant speed v relative to at, at S, and um, we make it so that the axes of these two frames are pointing in the same direction. Um, so yeah, so like um, suppose that uh, there is an event occurring in frame X S at the space-time coordinates X and T. Well, technically an event occur occurring in frame X S would, would occur at the uh, space-time coordinates of X, Y, Z, and T. We are giving the coordinates, like the coordinates in space of the this event, which is X, Y, Z, as well as the time at which this event occurred, which is T. So technically, the fluid space-time coordinates for some event occurring at corn at um, frame S would be x, y, z, t. And then this suppose that this event also occurs in S prime at um, the space-time coordinates of x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime. So yeah, same thing. It's uh, um, it's the same idea as with the uh, coordinates for the, an event occurring in frame at S, except now in S prime, uh, the the coordinates are like X prime, Y prime, Z prime, T prime. The space coordinates are X prime, Y prime, Z prime. The event is occurring at T prime. Uh, the Lorentz uh, transformation basically tells us what, how these two coordinates, um, what the relationship is between X, Y, Z, and T, at, well, X, Y, Z, T, and X prime, Y prime, Z prime, T prime. Uh, it's essentially a transformation from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. So um, the it's given here, at least, yeah, in matrix form. If we write this as an equation, we have that uh, x is equal to um, gamma. Uh, gamma is, of course, the constant that is 1 over, well, not constant, the number that is like 1 over square root 1 minus b squared over c squared. Um, 1 um, over, well, gamma times uh, x prime plus uh, v prime t prime. And um, t, wait, t is equal to gamma times um, 
v prime plus uh, v x prime over c squared. And also, we also have that y y equals y y prime and uh, z equals z prime. This the y equals y prime and z equals z prime occur because the if the coordinate frame s prime is moving with a speed v like okay it's moving in a speed v with a speed v along the uh okay uh, s prime here is moving with a speed v in that in the direct in the positive direction along the x axis of a coordinate system s so um yeah this is just like a this is just like um yeah, this is the Lorentz transformation when S prime is moving um, along uh, at the x-axis of S. So um, although in like real life, since you can choose the coordinate frames arbitrarily, you can always choose them so that this, um, yeah, if you're so trying to solve this problem, in if you're trying to solve like a, a relativity problem in real life, and you try to use this Lorentz transformation, since you can always choose a coordinate frame rel um, arbitrarily, you can just choose them so that the frame that is moving is moving in the opposite direction of the x-axis of, um, of the frame that you are assuming is stationary. So, um, so here we just, we just look at the case where it's moving in the positive, x, where s prime is moving, moving in the positive x direction of s yeah so so that's why y equals y prime and z equals z prime um here since uh well this is true because um s prime is not moving um relative to y and z so anyway this is so for right now we'll just care about x and t here um yeah uh so Okay. So yeah, this is the so um well we there is also the inverse Lorentz transformation that is we just have we just have uh x prime is equal to like um gamma x minus uh v okay uh v v t and like t prime is equal to gamma t minus v x over c squared this is just the inverse of of this of uh this trend of this so it's just another way of writing this but some people write Lorentz transformation as this um okay so uh yeah okay so um uh, Lorentz transformation is pretty important because sometimes because when we have two uh, reference frames uh, next to each other, when we have two one a reference frame moving relative to another reference frame, we some we would sometimes want to um, want to um, uh, trans like show. Um, uh, we would sometimes want to transform from one reference frame to another, and um, so it's a pretty so it's a pretty important like um, uh, uh, it's a pretty important like part of relativity. So uh, yeah, if if we have s prime moving relative to s, then this is true. Okay, the derivation of the Lorentz transformation is, is essentially assuming that the transformation is a linear transformation. And then we use some, uh, then we use our, like the derivation of the, um, yeah, it's essentially assuming that it's a linear um, transformation from X and T to uh, X prime and T prime. And then using some of the principles that we found in, earlier in relativity, such as like time dilation uh, and length contraction and some others to uh, derive these equations. Um, we'll come back to, we'll come back to the derivation if we have time at the end of the lecture. 
So uh, let's move on to this next important part of relativity, the space-time interval. Space-time interval is this delta is basically the space-time interval. You can think of it sort of as the distance between two events. Um, it's delta. Okay, the interval is this quantity here, delta s. Uh, space. Okay. The space-time interval is delta s, and this is essentially the distance between two events. And as we can see here, um, uh, yeah, well, okay. The space-time, um, okay, attack, okay, yeah. So, um, so if we if we look at like not special relativity, if we look at just like normal um, normal uh, life, then a distance would be defined the between two points would be defined as like delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared, where delta x y and z are the are the uh, distances between the two points. So this is what we would define as, so this would be a normal distance. Now this is basically, now this space-time interval is essentially the relativistic version of this. And instead of a distance between two points, it is the distance between, uh, between, between two events. So um, if we have one event that occurs at some point, uh, x, y, z, t, and another event that occurs a distance of, uh, okay, um, okay, never mind, wait. So suppose we have like two events, event one and event two, and they occur a distance of delta x, delta y, delta z, and delta t, um, there's a distance of like this is they occur a distance of delta x delta y delta z apart and a, and the time difference of delta t apart then we define the space time interval as delta s such that where delta s squared is equal to delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared minus um c times delta t squared so the important thing about this interval is that it is invariant under the Lorentz transformations. That is, if we um, that is, if if we have like this distance under a so that's that is if we measure the this this interval in one frame. Uh, suppose we measure this in frame S. So delta s squared, and let's just let all these delta x, y, z, and t, delta t be uh, x, y, z, and t. So uh, delta s, we just let this be delta x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus c, t squared. And then if we measure it in another frame, s prime, where s prime is moving uh, with a velocity of v relative to s in the same way as these two frames are moving relative to each other. Um, then uh, suppose we measure that this to be uh, the suppose the diff distances are x prime y prime. Uh, okay, delta s prime is equal to delta x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared minus c t prime squared. So. Uh, x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime are just the di differences as measured in this moving frame s prime. Now, then uh, delta s prime is actually is equal to delta s. It's uh, pretty simple to prove this. You just plug in the, um, you just, you just, you just plug in the Lorentz transformations, the Lorentz transformation for, for x prime, y prime, z prime t prime, and you can write them as x, y, z, and t. And then you can reduce it down to uh, delta s. So um, so uh, essentially, if you do this, if you plug in x prime, uh, well, 
uh, well, as shown here, x prime is equal to gamma times x minus vt. So if we plug in that for x prime, then we have gamma squared uh, times x minus vt squared. And then y prime and z prime are just y and z because uh, it's the same frame, two frames as before. And then uh, t prime is plugging in uh, is plugging in this quantity, gamma t minus vx over c squared. So we have gamma squared times t minus vx over c squared. If you, uh, sim if, you, if you simplify this, you basically get something like, uh, if you simplify this, you basically get something like one minus v squared over c squared. You, it, it basically simplifies back down to this other, um, term here. Uh, okay. So as you can see, clearly this is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus uh, c squared t squared. Okay, wait, I messed up here. This c should also be squared. Okay. And uh, so, and it sh it should be a c t c delta t squared with the uh parent with um yeah c it's, it should be like this okay um yeah so you get this and then um um yeah so this is the space time interval uh well this quantity is the space time interval. And as you can see, this thing uh, reduces down to the um, just, just delta s squared. So this is pretty important because it basically says that if you have two events and you measure the invariant interval between these two events in one frame, then if you measure it again, the invariant interval in another frame that's moving, you will measure the same thing. And that's pretty, um, so yeah, so this, so this, so the space-time interval is invariant under the Lorentz transformations. And so it, so that makes it a pretty um, important part of relativity. So now we have like a brief problem. It's also called, it's a pretty famous problem called the twin paradox. Where, base, where essentially if there are two twins, one of them stays on Earth and another flies to a planet X um, of a, a distance of X distance away um, at a speed V. Um, then when the, the twin that flies away returns, the two twins will have aged by different amounts. Um, so that's essentially... You can solve this with time dilation, but we can also see how we, but yeah, we can solve it with time dilation, but we can also use the space-time interval to demonstrate a solution that's uh, very nice. So um, if, so let's take two events. One of the events is where the first twin leaves. Then the second event is where the first twin arrives at the distant planet. So if we have Earth here and we have this other planet, wait, and it's separated by a distance of X. So one event is when the twin leaves and the second event is when the twin arrives. Okay, so we can find the inv invariant interval between these two events. For uh, the twin that stays on Earth, uh, well, for the twin that stays on Earth, well, the distance between these two events is x. So, and the, and uh, suppose it takes a time t for the for the twin to arrive at this planet. So, the invariant interval would be x squared minus c squared t squared for the first twin. Uh, suppose the first twin, since e stationary, is in the frame of s. So in this frame, then delta s squared is equal to this. Now for the second twin, he is in the frame of s prime. 
uh, and we shall find delta s prime. And we know that delta s prime uh, between these two events are the, um, the delta s prime is equal to delta s. So, um, so yeah, Delt, um, so let's find delta s prime in for the, the invariant, the space-time interval for this second twin. First, what is uh, x prime? Well, x prime is just equal to zero because, um, um, okay, x prime is equal to zero because for the twin, he is in a reference, he in, in the s prime reference frame. s prime is the reference frame that is uh, moving with speed v towards this planet. So in the s prime reference frame, uh, the twin is stationary. For the twin that is flying to the planet, he does not, uh, well, the invariant interval, the, for the, the space-time distance between these two coordinates, there is, doesn't, there's no um, distance traveled because he is stationary in this S prime uh, reference frame. So uh, then we have S delta S prime squared e is equal to negative C squared times uh, t prime squared. And we know that this has to be equal to x squared minus c squared uh, t squared. Okay, so now we, and, and on another note, we know that x equals vt because in the perspective of the first twin, it will take the, um, well, in the perspective of the twin that stays on earth, at, the time it takes for the for the other twin to arrive at this planet is just um, x over v. So we have x equals v t. So then we have negatives. So um, because the invar the the space time interval is invariant under in relative uh, between different frames, um, we have that these two are equal. So. And if we plug in x equals vt for this, we have t squared. And yeah, uh, wait, this is just, this is basically another way to, this is basically a way to see how time dilation works under the, the invariance interval. We have basically redirect, redirect time dilation using the space-time interval being invariant between two frames, because as you can see, uh, we have uh, t, t squared is just equal to, um, uh, hold up. Um, oh yeah, t squared is just equal to, um, to uh, t prime squared times uh, c squared over over c squared minus v squared, which as we can see, reduces to uh, t equals one over square root one minus v squared over c squared times t prime squared. So um, that's, that is the, that is the formula for time dilation that we re derived last class with just the uh, normal relativity um, methods. Uh, well, technically, this doesn't answer this question here, which is by which find the amount by which each team aged. But I think it's pretty obvious how you can find that. So, but here we've essentially shown how one can also uh, derive derive di derive the um, the uh, stuff like time dilation from the invariance interval. Yeah. So. Um, um, okay. So now it's 5.30. I believe my talk was supposed to last 30 minutes. So um, I guess we'll end it here. Um, thank you for listening.